Hey guys and welcome to another quick tip tutorial. Now this time I'm going to show you guys how to make stitches and in this case these type of stitches here and these ones are actually quite decimated but we'll make up uh, some proper sets as we go along. But yeah this is pretty much the gist of it and let's actually get started. So we'll go to one of our cylinders here, make that a poly mesh 3D. Okay it really doesn't matter if it's a cylinder or a star or a sphere, doesn't matter. Okay press W, we're going to go to customize, click on that, we're going to go to ring 3D. Okay, and after that, we're just going to rotate around here, press Shift F so we can see what we're doing. And quite a few things here, okay, don't get too bogged down by it, but uh, this here will control the open and closing of that. And we actually want this, but controlling it is kind of, so I'm going to hold down Shift, okay, so 180. But doing that is kind of a nightmare, I hate doing that, so we're just going to leave that. We're going to pull this down, okay, all the way to about 12, okay, 12 because it divides it by 4 and 3. Okay, and this green one, we're going to pull this Sorry, the middle one, okay, the inner one. We're gonna pull that or push that in rather until we get six. Okay, so the whole idea is just to make this some pretty small geometry. Okay, so next I'm gonna control shift, click and drag. Get that, I'm gonna go to delete hidden. Okay, delete hidden by the way is under geometry, modify topology and here is <laughs> geometry and modify topology and then we've got delete hidden right here. And I'm also gonna rotate this, okay, holding down shift so we get proper increments. Okay, to about 90, okay and we're going to press w again and then just bring this one down by just squash it down a little bit and up here if this bothers you you can go down to modify topology again go to close holes and if you don't like that you can go to mirror and wild on the y axis okay this should be default x so unclick uncheck that and then check y you can mirror and wild okay that'll mirror that if you don't like that what you could do is go to z modeler which is bzm hover over an edge hold down spacebar go to bridge okay and then we can bridge this one and this one and this one and this one and then this one and that one okay and that should be watertight then again you can go to mirror and wild and that'll do that okay so i don't mind the open edges but in case you do mind it that's that that's like that okay so here we have the front view that's where it's rotated to okay i'm gonna press ctrl w just in case okay and next what we're going to do is press b for brush and go to create insert mesh okay click on that it's gonna ask you new append or auto i want a new brush okay because we're creating a new brush and one thing i forgot to do was rename this you're gonna to want to rename this to like stitch default or something so that's gonna be a little bit of an issue later on but that's fine for now just an example so rename that okay and now if we click and drag on our brush here this is kind of halfway right on what we want so i'm gonna to go to our cap over here okay so we want to drag it here and obviously again that's not what we want so we want to go to stroke and then we want to go to curve Okay, and make sure curve mode is on. Now we can click and drag and we notice that that there is exactly what we want. But there's a few things that we probably don't want. So for example, these are too close together. And also it's kind of hovering above the surface. I want it to be into the surface or embed into the surface. So to do that, let's go to brush. We're gonna go down to depth. Okay, so brush, depth. Okay, and bring this down. I think three is a good one. So about three, okay, two. <laughs> Right, you can click on that and that will embed as it, as you go so you don't have to redo that but what we will have to redo so i'm going to undo that is go to stroke and the curve step i'm going to go to 1.3 maybe press enter and now i'm going to drag this out okay and there you go so now i can see they're further apart okay 1.2 might be a bit much so i'll go back to stroke and say 1.15 okay and then here you go okay if these are too big, you can take the... Oh, and this is how curves work, by the way. You have a cyan cursor and you have a red cursor. So the red cursor controls the size of this. The cyan cursor can just use... You can just use it to move this around. It's not the best way of moving it around, so I wouldn't really bother with the cyan cursor. You can also move it like this. Okay, or like that. If you want to add to this, as long as you have that dashed line, you can just click and drag and that should join together. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And if you want to get rid of the dashed line, just click and that'll get rid of that. Okay. So now again, we've got the red cursor. If I bring down the size and click on that, it will be smaller. And if I bring up the size of the red cursor, not the cyan cursor, cyan controls the movement, okay? And the red cursor controls the size. So if I click on that, there you go. Okay, so that's how we control the size of the mesh. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that to maybe two point something. And yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, maybe a little bit smaller, like 1.9. There you go, okay. And you might want to adjust that a little bit more, but we that's kind of what we want. So we're going to drag and and you kind of get the point. Okay, so there it is. And if you want a little bit more precision, you can go to stroke. Okay, you can go to lazy mouse. Make sure lazy mouse is on. 
and then lazy radius okay bring that up or down okay so if i go to lazy radius of 50 you see me dragging this there's a, a red line in front of my brush okay it really con helps control that piece okay so if i undo this okay and undo there you go and we do this right you notice it's a very very uh long line there that really helps us control okay and then we can do that and of course we can move this if we want but like i said that sign cursor can be a bit finicky so just be careful of that and there it is that is how you create that now you're probably thinking how do i save this so we press b okay make sure you have the brush selected if you're going to select something else um it's gonna try and save that brush so we press b save as you can also go here to brush save as it's the same thing and you can save this brush out now and obviously give it a name so like uh stitch default something like that okay get the point uh, this will just save it out as a brush which you will have to load you can either go to your desktop save it out or folder that you keep your brushes at or you can go to your pixel logic folder set brush you come here to z startup and in the z startup there are the brush presets okay and here is where i have all my custom brushes that i save and you can save it here if you save it here and i'm going to undo that if i press b you notice those brushes you might have seen them there change change custom change insert mesh all of these are in that custom folder and if i save this one as that it will be called whatever i name it and that'll be just like that okay and one more thing if you want a nice custom sort of look to it right you've got these orb cracks you've got the standard brush they all have this nice sort of circle or sphere rather and a sort of preview of what the brush looks like so to do that what we can do is choose our own sphere right we'll go to make polymesh 3d okay i'm not going to divide it or anything but you should obviously divide it right and what I will do is I will go and, you know, just create a bunch of right, random lines here and make sure you click. Okay, you get the point and maybe make that bigger, make that bigger, the red one. Okay, like that. And that's a little too big, so it's kind of clipping, but that's okay. Whatever, you can just create your own little preview here and then you go and over to brush and then say select icon. And there it is, just like that. Okay, so now we've got that icon which matches our brush. Okay, so that's how you select that. And again, you go to B, you can say save as, and that'll save out. Again, create the proper name or save it somewhere else, and it'll now have this icon. So that is pretty much it. And just as a bonus, I'll show you guys that you can. I'm going to duplicate this, Control Shift D. Okay, hide the first one. I'm going to rename this one here to, I think these are called cross stitches. I'm not sure of stitch names. Okay, we'll call them cross stitches. Okay, and we're going to rotate this by about 45 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate that one again. And take this one. And rotate that again. Okay, about 90. Move this one back. Go to this one and then say merge down, which is under here. Merge down. Okay. Now this is all one piece. I'll press Ctrl W just to make sure that one poly group. Okay. And then now I will make sure that I have my brush selected. Okay, that one. The one we just made. Okay, press B. Press create insert mesh. And we don't want to create a new one. We want to append it. Okay, and we can say skip. Now it's we've got cross stitches. And that's why I said rename it. Because now you've got PM 3D cylinder, right? Which is what you don't want. You've got these. So now I can use this one. Okay, and it'll do that. Or I can use this one, right? And it'll do that. And the cool thing is that if we go back to our cap here, okay, bring down the size about two maybe. If I select this one and I click on that, it'll change. So how cool is that? Okay, as long as you have that dashed line there, by the way. So that there is really cool. And of course, we can go back here and go to this one. And we can press F if you get lost. Control Shift D. And we will rename this one again. We'll call that double. Enter. Okay, I'll press W, Control, click and drag. So now we've got two stitches. Control W. Okay, and then we'll press B. Make sure you have the brush you want selected. Uh, create insert mesh. Append. And there you go. So now we go back to our cap. Now I'm on double. I can just uh, click on that. And there we go. We've got double stitches. So that's how you do that. And in case you're wondering, just as a bonus tip here. If, okay, just to get myself on there. I want to go to... I'll make polymesh 3D. Okay, so let's say we have a piece here, okay, and you want to, let's say, double stitches. I'll divide that a few times, actually, and I will delete the lower. Okay, so let's say you are drawing some stitches here, for example. It's pretty small, so let's bump it up. So like that. 
Okay, and you want to go all the way around here. Okay, and all the way around here. This is a little bit of a headache, right, as you can see. Because doing this and doing it very accurately and then doing that, it's like, oh no, that doesn't line up. So a quicker way to do that would be to use frame mesh. So I'm going to press Shift F. Okay, so we're going to press B, S, and then I. So slice curve. That will replace our control shift brush. So to do that. And now we've got a nice clean topology cut there. Next we will go to... We'll go to stroke. We we'll go to curve functions, okay, and then we're gonna go to frame mesh, but I just want the poly groups. I don't want the border and the creased edges. I just want the poly groups. So what am I framing? The mesh, and I'm framing the poly groups. So click on that, and there we have a nice one going right around. We're gonna get the size here, click on that, shift F, and there it is. A nice clean cut all the way around. So again, BSI, okay, create a nice slice there. Let me show you what I'm doing, like that. Like that. Okay, that might be a bit much. So I'm going to undo that. Okay, and I'm going to do all that. Get a delete hidden. Okay, and again, we're going to go to stroke, frame mesh, click on that, and there we go. Okay, and yeah, that is pretty useful. So, as you can see, right, a really quick way to get stitches in, a really quick way to make stitches. Oh, and by the way, while we're here, just while we're at it, if you press N, okay, you can select your sub tools this way, okay, which is really useful. And if you press M, and you have an insert mesh M, okay, for mesh, you can now select it this way, so you don't have to keep going up there. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but if you press B, I, and you have something like the IMM clothing, okay, or this one, IMM B parts, there's quite a lot here to scroll through, so you just press M, and you can select it like this, okay, which is really cool. So these are for insert meshes. So N for nautical uh, would be for selecting your meshes, and then M for mesh would be for selecting your IMMs, okay. And yeah, that is pretty much it, right? Just a few tips there, a few ways in which to tackle this, and a few ways to make stitches. Well, one way to make stitches, but multiple ways to kind of implement them, I guess, almost. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Also, some tips on curves, right? So if you come across BC like these curves, they all work the same way as this, okay? So yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought about it as well. And hey, if you really like my content, you can subscribe. Or you can check out my paid content down below. Thanks again, guys. See you in the next one.